So a lot of you really enjoyed the NURBS modeling video I just made recently. If you haven't seen it, I'd suggest watching it. Some good info in there. The number one question I was getting asked was how do you use these NURBS models in uh, Polygon software? It's super easy to do and is one of the best ways to maximize the efficiency of your workflows. So pretty much any Polygon based software can read FBX files. So um, essentially what you want to do is export your model from Moi 3D, Fusion, whatever you're using as an FBX file. This should be a default setting for any modern software. So we're going to go to File and we're going to go to Export and I'm just going to export this. You're going to go down here. The default is open nerbs.3dm. We want to use the FBX output here and I'll just overwrite this one and click Yes. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky because it, it depends what you're doing. For me, I mostly do renders. I'm not doing a ton of game assets. So usually what I'm doing is I'm ramping up the poly count. Reason being is because if the poly count is too low, then the rounded areas become blocky. And if it's too high, it just becomes really bogged down and it's kind of slow to move around. You don't have to go high. You only need to go to the point where it looks smooth enough, right? If you go too low, jagged, we're going to go to about here. And you also want to make sure the output is set to end gons because the default quads and triangles is not as uh, clean as I would make it manually. So I would do the ngons output. It does a very good job. This is one of the best connection point setups I've seen. And we're just going to click on the OK button. And basically, this should export as an FBX file. So at this point, you can hop into Blender and import that FBX file. We just go in here to the import section. We're going to import that FBX file. And it's going to take a second to load in depending on the poly count. So it'll probably take a good five to 10 seconds to do. And in general, it's going to be a very small object because there really isn't like a unit um, conversion that's going on here. So you could, you know, just scale this guy up. And you're going to see this is red in Blender with perfection. The wireframe is gorgeous. It's really smooth. Even the smaller areas with this tiny bevels. Notice how I have small bevels right here are perfectly transferred and getting these types of bevels uh, and you know these letters or whatever in Blender would be a very big headache we'd have artifacts all over the place so um, the connection point system is just beautiful and it does a really good job and this is a situation which um, NURBS is just better for um, quick conversion into poly so yeah that's basically what you do and at this point you can work on the model just as if you made this in Blender so I actually added in a little bit of a different design here after the fact so you know I could hop in here into box cutter or whatever if I want to make some adjustments I can literally um, just hop in here and do that I can cut a hole now the thing is you're not gonna have any modifiers applied uh, except the boolean I just ran so you are gonna have to rerun your bevels in the case you decide to run more booleans or whatever and um, you also obviously this whole thing is gonna be destructive because everything was applied um, from Moy upon export. So there are those types of downsides where you can't really change too much once you've designed it in Moy, but you can add to the model very easily. So as you can see here in uh, this particular render that's on the screen right now, I was able to make this render directly in Blender using cycles by simply importing the model and doing everything else in Blender. So it was a really robust workflow. I was able to set up my scene right here. And, you know, you can use this as if it was your own Blender model. So it's a really good way to get the maximum workflow efficiency, kind of using both softwares when they're necessary. And you can work in Blender just fine, no issues at all. So I'd really recommend if you guys do begin to use NURB stuff to kind of implement the Blender workflow in there as well, because you can use both um, very powerfully. So it's really not that complex, uh, contrary to what a lot of people were thinking. It's a one-click and done process. So that's about it for the video today. Hope it helps. And uh, by the way, we have some really cool stuff coming on our Patreon. Um, as always, the helmet we made for June, so just a couple weeks, that will be the tutorial for the month of June. So if you guys haven't yet, I'd recommend hopping onto our Patreon for this month, so that way you don't lose this month's tutorial, and you'll have a lot of cool tutorials coming from now onwards. So that's about it. Thanks a bunch for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.